This week, Liz and I are on our own, camping and fishing Florida Bay from Flamingo all the way to the Florida Keys. Yeah! Yay, finally! <laughs> Although we both grew up in Florida, we've never been to this part of the state and we're excited to get on the water. Before heading on down, we make a quick stop by White's Tackle for some last minute supplies and a little local knowledge. A couple of 16s, you can tie on some 20 pound to that. Okay. Or you know, if they're super finicky, go down to 12 pound. Always good. I'd say that would that definitely make it dangerous. All right, we're on the road. From Fort Pierce, it's just a few hours south to Homestead, where we find the circus has come to town. Give him chicken. What? This lady's like all over the place trying to catch his chicken. <laughs> Let me see. So we, we're at an intersection here, and we have a woman that is driving around circles in the intersection trying to catch a chicken that was crossing the road. Leaving the chicken wrangling behind, we enter the Everglades and miles upon miles of sawgrass marsh before finally arriving at Flamingo, the end of the road and the start of our adventure. So we, we're having to map out an itinerary here and this is something that I have a great deal of aversion to, is itineraries. Well, well, I thought we could just like go until we got ready to stop. We can't. I didn't realize we had to get to a certain spot every night. I have to know where I'm going to be. I've never been here. I have to know where I'm going to be every night and get permits for that spot instead of just going wherever. So that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll make it work. Being accustomed to the vast and lightly used backcountry areas of the western states, where you're still free to explore and camp wherever you like, the rules and regulations here are a bit of a surprise. But with so many people using the park, I suppose it's just the way it has to be. An unfortunate necessity. I just don't want to be in a rush to get out there and... All right, I think that's the safest thing. We're going to stay here at the campground tonight. We're going to put the boat in, go explore a little bit, and then um, come back. And then tomorrow, we'll try to uh, get out to one of the keys and start camping. Do some real camping. All right, so let's go reserve that stuff. Okay. So we'll have to do two different, two different permits because you only get two nights at one spot. All right, so we just put in at the marina at Flamingo to go into Florida Bay. It's a little bit stressful. <laughs> I've never been down here. Um, there's shallow, shallow, shallow bay. And so uh, it, it, the risk of running aground is not insignificant. Um, they tell me the channels are well marked. I've got my, uh, my GPS system here, so um, hopefully we can stay out of trouble. There's a couple of islands out here that are just a few miles offshore. I can see them right here in the distance. Um, Flip says that uh, there's some pretty good fishing just right there around those islands. So I think what we might do is just run up to the upwind side of those and let the, the wind push us across the flats and do a little bit of polling and just see if we can see anything. But the tide right now I think is fairly high. Um, I think we actually might be at the, the close to the peak of the tide. But um, I don't know, today's just kind of an exploration day. We're just gonna get out, go out here and see what, uh, see what we can see. There's an ibis in a tree right here. There's an osprey in the tree over there. There's mangroves everywhere. It's a beautiful place. Florida Bay, the body of water that lies between the southern tip of the mainland and the Florida Keys, is a huge body of water. But with depths that rarely exceed five feet, you don't need a big boat to explore it. And with such a wide expanse, there's plenty of places to get away from people. So there's, there's two islands right here. 
there and there. And then right in the middle, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a, just a kind of a mirage, just a shimmer on the water. I think that's the Johnson, Johnson uh, Key Chicky, which we'll be staying at tomorrow night. I thought it was farther out there. So we are at dead high tide right now. So the tide's gonna be falling. Never pulled a boat before, so uh, Flip said it was gonna be interesting and prepare to go in a lot of circles. I think I can do better than that. Going against Flip's advice. Pulling from the back. I got evidence to show him. It's peaceful out here. excursion was a semi-success. One fish. We did, we caught one fish. We, we didn't run aground and we found where we got to go tomorrow. What time can we just go out there in the morning and drop our stuff off or is it like a check-in time? There's nobody there. No, somebody, I don't think so. All right, I think that's what we'll do. <laughs> we'll run and drop our, drop our stuff off and then we'll go fish. Okay. Can you back the, the car in the trailer? I don't know. I'll try. Look at that, how well she did. What's for dinner? Mm, we got burgers, onions and peppers, and squash. All right, so this is morning number one. Uh, we, this morning, I think we're just gonna go grab some ice, throw everything in the boat, and head straight out to the chicky unless we get into something before we get there. If we see some fish rolling or something like that, we might stop. Um, we'll drop all our stuff on the chicky to lighten the boat up a little bit, and then the tide is gonna be falling until noon. Low tide's gonna be at noon. I think uh, at low tide, from what I was hearing is those fish will lay in those canals uh, and then wait for that tide to start coming up and then they'll follow that tide line uh, as the tide's rising up onto the flats. So anxious to see what the uh, the water looks like at low tide and, and what we might get into this morning. Chickies like this are scattered throughout the mangrove backcountry to the north, but this is the only one out in the bay. They're nice, but you're only allowed to stay for one night before you have to move. You can reserve them online or at the ranger station at Flamingo. We drifted and pulled all day and finally kind of towards the early afternoon we caught a few fish. Uh, Liz caught a couple of little small uh, barracuda and we got into, uh, to a couple of jacks and she scooped up a couple of crabs. So we hadn't planned on cooking crabs but uh, they were big so we went ahead and grabbed them and I think we're just going to stick them in the coffee pot and steam them up in the coffee pot. The idea was to eat fish, but I, brought back up. I said we shouldn't bring any food because we're going to catch a bunch of fish, but Liz decided she wanted to bring some food, so good thing it brought Liz. Oh, it's a sad part. I don't like it. He doesn't like it either. in there. Oops. 
spill all this in the tent. Never cooked a crab in a coffee pot before. It makes you think what our coffee's gonna taste like in the morning. It tastes like crab, that'd be all right. Mm -hmm. To, so once we get to Rabbit Key tomorrow night, it's just, it's a very short distance over to the, the actual Florida Keys. Um, and what they tell me is the, the closer you get to the Keys, you're gonna start picking up bonefish and tarpon and things like that. I don't know, we'll see. There was supposed to be, there was supposed to be snook and redfish and I haven't, I mean, I'm not saying they're not here. I know they're here. Um, we just suck. Mm -hmm. I think those guys are done. The big one is missing both claws and he's got about... He, he's, he, look, I think he was run over with a boat. He was pretty rough shape. He's got a big hole in the side right there, but it'll be alright. I'll eat that one. Okay, you eat that one. I'll let you have it. <laughs> That's blue crab cooked in bay water with nothing but salt. And it is delicious. No seasonings needed. I think they're really good. It was worth getting my sleeve wet to get them. I have waiting to get some every day. It's not a bad place to have dinner. Day three, sunrise. So yesterday when we got out here, there was a bunch of boats that were all wadded up just off the chicky here. And this morning they've done the same exact thing, so there's got to be something going on here. Everybody's going to this one spot. Um, and so I think what we're going to do is just go over here and I think what they're doing is drifting live baits, which we don't have. Uh, and so I think what we might do is just go over here and, and drift down through there and just throw some of these jerk baits and spoons and just see if we can figure out what those guys are doing. First cast, mama. What is it, a ladyfish? Ladyfish. Nice. That's another little speck. Nice. Actually, I might need to measure him. Yep. I think so. Here, let me check real check. quick. Can't afford to make mistakes. Damn, mama tearing them up. Nice. Is that a keeper? <laughs> uh, I think he's a little too small. I've fished for speckled trout all my life in Northwest Florida, but I've never seen them stacked into a place like this. For hours, it was nearly non-stop. Am I just gonna be your fish getter? <laughs> Might be a keeper. 
her. Just shy. Aww. Like an eighth of an inch. We were casting a combination of weighted weedless worm hooks with Berkeley five inch gulp shad and a three eighths ounce jig head with gulp shrimp. Both were getting slammed. I think he's too short. Drifting across the grass beds in about four feet of water, casting to the deeper sandy bottom and lighter colored holes seemed to be the ticket. Every time we got to within casting distance of one of those holes, we'd pull out two or three trout. Yeah, it's turned on. I think this is another trout. Oh, that's a jack. Good one. We'll worry about the jack later. Oh, that's a bleed. This might be. Oh, oh no! Dang! That would have been the one too. Yep. Let's go ahead and run back up to where we started catching those fish and drift back through there again. I like catching fish. It's much better than yesterday. Here, have some water. Caught one trout that was pushing. He could have been legal if I wanted to really try it, but. If I'd have squeezed him real hard in the middle, he'd have been legal. What was it?
killer. That bait looking pretty rough. So we've been wearing out the small trout, just barely sublegal. I'd say 12 to 14 inches. They gotta be 15 inches to keep. How many trout you think we've caught? I don't know, a lot. 20, 30? 20, 30, yeah. Lots of ladyfish, a few jacks. So we're gonna make one more pass through here and uh, see if we can't dredge out a little bit bigger one. About 14 7 eighths. Next, we're going to catch one that's over the slot. By early afternoon, we caught dozens of specks, ladyfish, jacks, and a few small barracuda. But it was time to pack up and head on out to Little Rabbit Key and set up camp for the next few days. All right, saying goodbye to the chickie. Headed to Rabbit Key. clear I'm thinking this is gonna be buggy all right we have just arrived at rabbit key doesn't appear to be anybody else here Let's look around a little bit Trail that goes nowhere. This is it. It is. It is sweltering right here. The water is crystal clear right here. May even go for a swim. That's deep. Yep. Thing off of me. <laughs> ow! Ow! Watch my ears! <laughs> ow! <laughs> With my shoulder, I can't get up. I can't pull myself up. Ugh, I'm just so sore from. 
You really didn't see the shark? I really didn't see the shark. Is there a shark in there? <laughs> yeah. It has been a long day, but a good day. We caught lots and lots of fish this morning, or all through the day. Um, started off, we just kind of packed up our stuff and left it on the chickie there and went and uh, over where I'd been seeing some other boats, caught a couple of ladyfish over there. And then we went back up into a little bit of a cove and made one drift and Liz caught a trout. And so, and then after that, we started catching them. And so we made that drift probably four or five times today and probably caught 25 speckle trout uh, and a bunch of ladyfish and some little snapper. Um, nothing that was keeping size. Nothing that was keeping size. I've been wanting some fish tacos, but we hadn't got there yet. <laughs> so we're settling for chicken. <laughs> so we're, we got chicken tonight. Um, I mean, we had some that were... I, it, if you'd have really wanted to push it, uh, they, they might have been legal. I didn't want to push it, didn't want to be running around here with trout that I was having to worry about. So we went ahead and turned them back and uh, I think we'll be able to get into something tomorrow maybe. We'll, uh, we'll see. We may end up running down to the Keys and uh, seeing what's going on down there. But we'll just have to get up and see what tomorrow brings. No plan. Mm -hmm. Hopefully sleep tonight, that's the plan. Yeah, we haven't been sleeping very good. What is it? All right guys, that's gonna do it for today bring you guys back in the morning. I'm going to set up a time lapse tonight of the stars. See if I can get the tide going out. See you tomorrow. We've had a great time so far, but there's still a lot of exploring to do. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and catch part two of this video where we run down to Isla Mirada before heading back north and into the mangrove backcountry. And we've still got to make good on those fish tacos, so we'll see you next Thursday.